So I made some pretty cool plugins for DaVinci Resolve and I bundled them all up in a nice little pack of 20 transitions, effects and generators and put them up on my site for you guys to grab. Now it is a paid pack, but if you guys want 50% off, I'm gonna be dropping some letters like this throughout the whole video. And yes, that is the first one. And these letters all add up to a discount code. So make sure to watch through the whole video to get that code. But anyway, today I'm gonna be running through some of the more complicated effects in the pack and some of the really cool stuff that you can do with them. All all of the stuff in the pack is drag and drop and it just works but some of them you might want to tweak some stuff to get them to do exactly what you want and trust me there's some really cool stuff you can do so let's get into it so the first thing we're going to be running through is the pruning effect from loki so you can see here if i just drag and drop the loki prune effect it starts to prune away at the image but you might not want to use it to prune the whole image you might just want to prune one thing within the image so what we're going to do here we're just going to first copy this clip we're going to need three different layers for this effect to work and then we're going to come into the color page come into magic mask if you guys don't have the studio version of resolve don't worry this effect still does work but if you want to do just like pruning one specific thing in your clip then you're just gonna to have to do a bit of rotoscoping instead of using magic mask so we're just going to get magic mask to do its thing and then we're just going to track the mask and then just come in right click add alpha output and just drag the blue output into this blue dot so now we've just got our subject cut out i'm not going to worry about making this one perfect it's good enough for what we're doing here then i'm just going to render this out just to save on some buffering perfect so now we've got our cutout the next layer we're going to need is a clean plate so i've already got a clean plate here you can see we've got me, turn it off and nothing, which is exactly what we need. But you can also see there's a microphone in front of my face. So we want that to stay in the clip as well. Just gonna hold down Alt and drag out to copy this clean plate and you're gonna bring it back on top. And then we're just gonna come back into the color tab, back into magic mask and just mask out the microphone. So that should be pretty good, I think. We're just gonna track that and then add another alpha output and drag this in. So now you can see if we turn everything else off, we've just got our microphone. This isn't perfect. If you want it to be really precise with this, you could mask it out in Fusion with polygons, but for the purpose of this, Magic Mask will work fine. So now all we have to do is just drag and drop our prune effect onto our rotoscoped me. So if we come in here and just open up the Fusion overlay, come to the end of the clip about here you can see it doesn't quite get to the end as fast as we'd like. So you just bring up this end size maybe to like 1.5 and then we can bring our starting point down to the bottom maybe and then let's say we want to change up some of the colors of the sparks and whatnot so we can bring the burn color which is this glowing line here to like a teal and then we can bring the sparks to about a teal as well so now we've got a pretty cool pruning effect and like it's completely customizable if you wanted to start from a different position Start it from up the top, maybe. So you want to saturate the colors a bit more, bring it to like a pink and a green. So now you've got a different look to it. And you could use this for transitions and pruning stuff in your footage or whatever you want. Just be super creative with it because everything's customizable. And it doesn't matter how long your clip is. If you want it to prune really slow, just make a longer clip and it'll automatically adjust to the size of your clip. Next up, we've got our disintegrate effect, which is very similar to the pruning one, but more of like that Thanos snap like dusty look. So again, we're just gonna use the same clip with the clean plate and everything. So just drag and drop. So if we come to like halfway through, you can see it's that more like dusty look and we can change the colors this color over life so this first this one on the left this orange would be the color right at the source and then it would fade off into a white or whatever color you want it to be so if you want it to be like pink and the end color to be like blue gives it like a bit of a different look you can again change the end size so if you've got something that's a bit bigger you want to prune or something that's a bit smaller you can change that up you can change the particle size so if you want more particles more variance bit of difference in velocity the size scale you change all that stuff up and gives it a bit, bit of a different look so you can see there's way more particles now and then if you want to change the direction the particles flow you can do that too so if you want them to flow in any direction you want just move this slider around and they can fall down they can go to the side whatever you want we're just going to put it back to 90 for the purpose of this though 
So now you can see you get a really nice disintegrate effect. And again, this is completely customizable and it automatically adapts to whatever size clip you have. The next ones we've got are Neon and Electrify. For this, we'll just bring in a text plus node, bring it to whatever font you want. We'll use Comica Axis for this. Bring up the size a bit. And just for this, to make it stand out a lot more, we're gonna set it to Gradient. So for this, we can just drag and drop Electrify V2. And you can see it makes these really cool electric sparks. And again, completely customizable. If you want the sparks to look different, sort of just play around with that. Bring the seed up, bring the seed rate up, make it discontinuous, get a bit of a different look. If you want to change the glow size, bring the gain up on this one, bring the glow size back down a bit, change it to like a blue or a yellow or a red, whatever color you want, saturate it a bit more. Right, you can see it's, it's super easy to do. Whatever you want, however you want to make this look, you can do it everything's customizable. And all these settings can, might look a little bit daunting, but it's basically just playing around and seeing what you can get. It's super easy, just sort of muck around and see what you can get out of it. Be super creative. And this doesn't just work on text. It'll automatically find the edges of stuff. So if I just drop it onto like a Resolve logo, it finds all those perfect edges. Or if I just drop it onto this rotoscope thing of me, it just finds the edges. And you can do it on like the whole footage if you want but it'll sort of look a little bit weird. Whatever you want to do, you can do with it. It works on anything. Just drag and drop and it just works. And then the next one we've got is neon. Pretty much in the name, it just creates neon lines around the edges of stuff for you. So it's perfect for text. You want to, you know, saturate the colors a bit more, change up the colors. So let's say, a, eh, let's say a blue. And if you want it to move a little bit, we can bring the movement up. So if you bring it right up, it creates gaps and they'll sort of slide around. But if you just want a little bit of movement, just bring it to there, bring the movement rate right up. And it'll sort of like just move around a little bit and sort of pulse like a like a neon light would. And like glow gain, glow size, bring the threshold up a bit. Whatever you want to do, it's uh, completely customizable. If you just want it really subtle, you can do that. Bring the movement back down, and bring the brightness back up a little bit. So now it's just really subtle color. You know, it's a... Uh, it's really cool what you can do with it. And again, if you just want to drop it onto anything, you can drop it onto anything. So, you know, there's so much cool stuff you can do with it. Just drag and drop, play around and see what you can get. The final things we're going to have a look at are the trackers. So this is tracking for the edit page. We've got track text. So it's put in tracker. And again, if you just open up your fusion overlay, you get this little tracking box. Go to a part of the clip where like you can see my eyes, drag it onto the eyes. Doesn't work perfect every time with the tracking box. Like, you know how you do it in fusion, you get like that zoom in. It doesn't always work perfectly with this, but it does sometimes. I don't know why, but you know, it's good enough for what you need to do. Come onto my eyes, because when you're doing tracking, eyes are a really good thing to track. Trackers just, for some reason, they just really like it. And we just track forward. Nothing will pop up like in the Fusion page to say it's tracking, but you can see once it's done tracking, you get the render complete. So now you can see our text is tracked to my head. Turn the Fusion overlay back on. You can move your text around wherever you want it to be, and it just works. And then we've got a tracked image. So for this one, you can just upload any, any image. So if you go browse, if I just upload this thumbnail that I have, bring the image size down, and then we just get the tracker, bring the image over here somewhere. Again, bring the tracker to my eye and just track forwards. Just let it do its thing. So now we've got the image tracked to my head, which is great. And then the final tracker is a locked on tracker. So if we drag this on, fusion overlay back on, back to frame one, track on my eye, track forward. Now you can see it's sort of put everything out of place. So if we just bring me back in and bring the size up a bit, we've got like that camera tracking stabilization look, which is just so, so useful. Instead of having to go in and try and figure out all the nodes that you need to make it work or having to go in, zoom in and keyframe all of those movements to get that stabilized look. Now you've got it all on the edit page, which is just, just incredible. So those are all the complicated effects in the pack. And just those alone, super powerful, super useful. There's 20 plugins in this pack with a mix of effects like all of this, and then some transitions and some generators as well. Some of the generators are really cool. Like the background generator, which is completely customizable. Fire text, which is 
literally what it says got a grid generator again completely customizable change up the color to whatever you want make it like a gradient like red big grid little grid like make it more transparent or make it stand out more or make it warp make it animate you know you can do cool stuff like that there's so much cool stuff like the rest of them are basically just drag and drop and they do exactly what they want to do if you need to move stuff around there's controls here or if you just want to drag them just open up your fusion overlay and it works perfectly so if you guys want to grab this pack the link is in the description and if you do thank you so much and hopefully you were paying attention throughout the video and you got all those letters for the discount discount code but thank you so much for watching and make sure to subscribe because i've got a lot of cool stuff coming and if you guys want to learn about character animation make sure to watch this video here thanks again and i'll see you in the next one